I've asked myself, why do I travel? To discover new places? And feel different cultures? Maybe I need new challenges. Meet new people. Familia Peregrino. Bon Camino! Or is it to create new memories that last forever? Come with me on the Portuguese Camino, starting in Porto, Portugal, and ending in Santiago de Compostela in Spain. A couple of days in Porto, taking in the sights and planning our new adventure. In the back of my mind, there's always the questions, are we prepared enough or do we have the stamina to finish this? And of course, which route will we take? Considering there are many different variants to the Portuguese Camino, will we stick to the coast or head inland? That will be decided as we go. Which way are we going? You sure? This is our third Camino, the French route in 2017, which kicked it all off. And then the Northern in 2020 on bicycles. And now the Portuguese. For Sandy, this is her maiden Camino. The Camino de Santiago is a network of different pilgrimages, all leading to a city in the northwestern part of Spain called Santiago de Compostela. Here, allegedly, is a burial site of the biblical Saint St. James. The over 1,000 year old city was designated a UNESCO site in 1985. This famous pilgrimage site became a symbol in the Spanish Christian struggle against Islam. To complete the Camino, you have to collect stamps, which can be obtained from churches, albergues, or restaurants along the way. These are documented in your passport, which can be purchased at the church you start. When collecting the required number of stamps, you're entitled to the Certificate of Distance document. This indicates your start, ending point, dates, distance, and route travel for your pilgrimage. It still amazes me I can fit my whole life into a travel bag. We had an early morning start. our first day of walking the Camino and it's a beautiful day today rain yesterday so good thing we started today so we've just walked down to the river and because we're in Porto we decided to have a port so there's Vic and Sandy having a port as we headed eastly we could see the Lewis the third bridge fading in the distance all we had to do was to keep the Jura River and the soon after North Atlantic Ocean to our left. Only one kilometre away is the Maria Paya Railway Bridge. Mid morning, and we caught a glimpse of the 17th century Castel de Cuejo, which means cheesecake, as it is built on granite that resembles cheese. Later, we came across some statues and a Lord of the Sands Lantern Tower. Matosinos is a major port, surfing and fishing town. 
A big draw card is its soft sanded beaches and closeness to Porto. Walking along the boardwalks, it reminded me of what Martin Sheen said in a recent interview regarding walking the Camino. He said, it's an effort to unite the will of the spirit with the work of the flesh. The set of 32 tanks carved into the rock date back to the 3rd and 4th century. Apparently these tanks were used for salting fish and doing some preserves. Albergue Sal Tiago was our first pilgrim hostel with 45 beds and a 10 euro donativo. For Sandy's first taste of albergue life, it wasn't the best, but we survived. Day two of our Camino, another beautiful day, leaving La Bruges and crossing over to the central route today, home Camino. Our second day in and 47 kilometers away from Porto, I feel as though for me, our third Camino, this is where it actually starts. This is where we get away from the coast and into the center of the Portuguese way of life. The backward little alleyways and streets going into the smaller villages and pueblocitos is what the Camino Portuguese is all about. Not taking anything away from the coastal route. The coastal route was really good. In fact, we enjoyed some amazing landscapes. Do a handstand. Right. At this point, we see the coast after one and a bit days of, of walking. And now we're heading inland. This will be a bit more challenging for the first half a day or so and then it should be between some smaller villages and a lot more albergues and restaurants. It's day two, we're on the link route from the Toral to Central route and yeah, we still got another 6Ks to get to where we're going today, but yeah, we're doing well. It's hot, and I'll show you the view in front of me. There we go. Nice church. We treated ourselves to this beautiful restored Free Star Hotel. After checking into our spacious room, I decided to explore the large property. Then take a swim in one of the two pools. We also had dinner and breakfast there amongst fellow pilgrims. Overall good, but far more than the 8 to 12 euros that you find in albergues. Day 3 of the Portuguese Camino and we stayed at this beautiful Quinta just outside Arcos actually. After 22 k's everyone was ready to pull the pins so we stopped there and uh, had a private room instead of sharing with 50 other people. Anyway, it was lovely and uh, who knows what today will bring. going.
just arrived and before we actually make a mess of the place I'll just get some footage this is the art hotel we have a double and then Sandy has her little spot here quite nice and then we look over into the swimming pool area. Before breakfast and heading off, we decided to explore the place. When walking through the historical centre, you are stepping on the same path taken by pilgrims for centuries in the hope of reaching Santiago. Barcelos is best known for its Thursday open air weekly market, and most notably, the brightly painted cockerel. This popular souvenir represents good luck, faith and justice as its crowing saved a man from the gallows according to local legend. Okay, day four, we're just leaving uh, Barcelos. Stayed here at the Art Hotel. Another beautiful day, and it's going to be a short one. Woohoo! This stone Gothic bridge dates back to 1325, was classified as a national monument in 1910. Barcelos is one of those places you can imagine yourself returning to and exploring more. Beautiful. I am constantly reminded of the uniqueness of this region. Where else could you find boundary fences made from locally mined grey and bluish grey granites? As we approached the junction, I remember thinking, life constantly gives us choices. Sometimes you may venture down the wrong path. But I'm a great believer, if you learn from it, you are a far better person. Well, you can go either way, that way by the wooden cross. That way by the church, both 186 kilometres to Santiago. This is what you would expect from a municipal albergue. So there's 12 beds in this room, but it's only 5 euros. And it was built in 2010, so it's uh, relatively new. It's a mixed dorm, and I think they have 41 beds here. After a very short day of about 11 kilometers and about two and a bit hours of walking we come across this one place that Cathy actually booked a, a night before which is very rare. It's only a small room but it's got a bit of character to it. It's quite a nice little place. A casa de Fernanda, casa de peregrinos, familia peregrinos, okay? So I hope que Santiago did it to everybody healthy life for many caminos. 
Enjoy this moment and it's a moment to pray and to sing and to cry and to swim in the cold water. Is your coming, just do it from your heart, okay? Yeah. And walk another step for peaceful in the world, okay? Yes. And walk another step for the people who have cancer, for your grandparents, for your children, for everybody, for the world, okay? Yeah. So, bon appetit. Bon appetit. I hope you like my soup. Uh, here comes <laughs> day six day six we're leaving Casa Fernanda and on to as the day went on and I thought of our previous day, I was compelled and moved so much that I thought it fitting to express Fernanda's story and how she got involved with the Camino. Good morning, my name is uh, Maria Fernanda, I'm uh, 51 years old and uh, I live in here, I born here with uh, my family parents and my father and mother gave this land to make the house because uh, many years ago I meet a Portuguese woman, she walked this way and uh, she asked me for help because she knock knock all the houses and asked for help and everybody closed the door. So she found me by accident and she say, please help me, I am a peregrina. I don't need food, no shower, no toilet, just I need a roof because I'm afraid to sleep outside. Please help me. And I'm very sad and one second I think she need help and I say, I go help you. But I don't know where because I don't have nothing. I call my husband and my husband say to me, okay, maybe it's no danger. And I say, it's not danger because she's so tired and she has very bad feet, many blisters, and she ne just needs a place to stay. And I offer a bed in my house and also a, a toilet, a shower. And this day she took a cold shower because I don't have hot water. So she have a shower and I invite also for dinner. And she say, no. You give me a bed, I'm, I'm good. I say, no, so you are really peregrina. You need to eat with us. So she have a dinner with us. And also I offer a breakfast, a tiny breakfast, like Portuguese breakfast, bread and coffee and, and uh, nothing more. So after breakfast, she tried to pay me to give me money because I helped. And I say, no. Fernanda, tell me what I can I do for you in Santiago de Compostela? A candle and I say no maybe you get a big hug and she get a big hug because in my here my my brain and my heart I fix Santiago's big arms waiting for everybody to get a big hug to everybody doesn't matter which color you are doesn't matter what you believe and she get a big hug for me from my family and then start my coming here after 20 years or 21 I think and and I never stopped but I never think this is the Camino de Santiago. And now I know. Be back, you know what is Camino de Santiago? Camino de Santiago is love. What you give, what you offer, Santiago sends it to you back. So it's what happened with me. So uh, now, sleep in my house, 136 nationalities. So and I'm very happy every day. And I love to receive pilgrims. This is more important for me, pilgrims, okay? And I hope Santiago gave me to me and to everybody peace and love because the Camino is just peace and love and meditation and prayer. We dropped our luggage off and checked the views from our two-bedroom apartment. Then we set off to explore the oldest town in Portugal, Ponta de Lima.
being the most symbolic monument of the city, we had to visit the Roman-built Punta de Lima Bridge, stretching 277 metres across the Lima River. Afterwards, a few more churches before we retired. Okay, it is day seven, and we're heading up the mountain today. And it's cold outside, as you can see. We're dressed up warmly. It's 7 a.m., and this was the apartment we had last night. Casa da Travesa. And here we go. A priest, Elias Valino, noticed that pilgrims often got lost. He obtained some yellow paint, which was left over from some local road painting, and started to paint yellow arrows along the route, on trees and rocks and houses, to indicate the correct path. In Portugal you find these arrows, while in Spain, in addition, you have blue backgrounds with yellow arrows. Ceramic tiles with a shell indicate the path and distance left to travel. This was our first uphill challenge, although not tough. Our first taste of rain lasted only two hours. We were greeted by a lovely lady who cleaned and dried our shoes. We're getting ready for our next adventure. It's slightly rainy but uh, it's going to be a beautiful day. We may make it to the border of Spain. There's the girls in Cathy's outfitted to rob someone. Let's not waste time or take this slow. We've got miles behind us, but miles to go. So let's just break this down to the simplest truth. Saludi! We're about to cross over into Spain from Portugal. It's day eight. We're leaving Valencia and going to Tui. So, there's the sign. Portugal. And 
there's the bridge we're about to cross. finally made it to Tui, looking down upon the Mijo River, which divides Portugal from Spain. On the other side is Portugal, where we had lunch today. We came across the albergue Ideas Peregrinas, only a few steps from the Tui Cathedral and on the Camino de Santiago. Our room with a view. Somehow we managed an attic room for the three of us for 38 euros a night. Something you don't expect from an albergue. A well appointed common kitchen and chill out room. This turned out to be a pleasant surprise 